In this session, we're looking at the causes and consequences of urbanisation. We'll start with the causes of urbanisation in advanced countries. Um, this means people were moving from the countryside to the city in large quantities. In the countryside, sources of power such as the steam engine were being invented and there was much more machinery used. Um, this shows a tractor from the late 1800s. This extra machinery and power meant that less workers were needed. So people were losing their jobs in the countryside and moving to the cities to try to find work. At the same time as this agricultural change or revolution, uh, within the cities, the industrial revolution was taking place. Lots of factories were opening up and these new factories provided jobs for the people who were moving from the countryside. This meant that cities grew greatly in size. New houses, shops, services were built for the expanding population. So this urbanisation in advanced countries was from the 1780s onwards. In low-income developing countries, the urbanisation has occurred since about 1950. In the countryside areas, the rural areas, um, there are negative factors that make people want to move, known as push factors. The first example we've got here is natural disasters. If floods or earthquakes or things such as that occur within the countryside, um, people um, their property will be damaged, they might have lost their fields or their farm equipment, etc. And so they move to the urban area searching for work, searching for jobs which they've lost within the countryside. Another push factor could be conflict or war, causing people to flee their homes. Where will they move to? They'll go to areas uh, where they think there's um, semblance of order and they can be with people who are similar to them, get away from the war zone. Thirdly, um, again, machinery um, being introduced to countryside areas means that less farm workers are needed. Um, another push factor that makes people want to move to the urban areas. Meanwhile, there are advantages of the urban areas known as pull factors. There could be more jobs and better paid jobs than in the countryside. There could be better health care with larger um, hospitals and more capable doctors um, to look after people and um, schools there's many more secondary schools available within cities than within the countryside finally to be with family members who have already moved to the cities so these show um, migration movement of people to the countryside from the countryside to the cities which causes the cities to grow Another reason is internal growth. This is where more children are being born than people are dying. And it's because the people who are be being moved from the countryside to the cities are younger people in their 20s and 30s. And this is the age range of people who will be starting a family. Also, within the cities, there's much better health care with many more doctors and hospitals. This reduces the death rate and increases the proportion of people living within the urban areas. This occurred from the 1950s onwards. Next, let's have a look at the consequences of the cities growing. We'll split this into four different categories, pressure on resources, impact on the national, natural environment, pressure on human resources and impact on quality of life. Will there be enough food? Will there be enough water and clean water at that? And will there be enough land if the city continues to expand? If the city expands, trees will need to be cut down in surrounding rural areas and habitats will be destroyed. Um, there might be more water and air pollution as there's more factories, industry and transport and there might be more erosion as a result of the city expanding. Will there be enough schools? Um, will class sizes increase if the city is expanding? Will there be enough hospital beds for everybody? Will there be enough housing or will some people be forced to sleep on the streets? And how can we keep a massive city of people um, clean. 
Finally, um, growth in the city may lead to unemployment. Um, there might be overcrowding and traffic congestion because you'll have the same roads, but just with more people using them. Finally, and more extreme things, there could be extra crime as a result of the cities expanding because criminals will be attracted to where there are lots of people. It could lead to war and conflict. And finally, um, it could actually trigger um, migration, movement, movement to people away from the city. Now, the final consequence of urbanisation in LIDCs is shanty towns. Um, these are also known as informal housing, slums, squatter settlements, favelas, busties, and they have many other names. And this is where people from the countryside who lack skills and lack qualifications move to the city to try to find a job. But when they get to the city, um, they can't afford um, rent or they can't afford to buy a house or get a good job. So they end up building their own houses out of materials that they can find. So shanty towns um, are areas made of plywood, corrugated metal sheets of plastic. They lack services, they lack toilets, running water and electricity because they're illegal. And shockingly, one billion people across the world live in these areas that they have built themselves. Um, here's an example of a house built out of materials that people can find. Toilets, um, often they are not around. Um, within Kibera, a shanty town in Kenya, it is famed for the flying toilets where people um, will do their excretion in a bag and just throw it as far away from their shanty townhouse as possible. Here's a better quality toilet. Um, within Daravi, a shanty town within Mumbai, one toilet could be shared by about 500 people. Here's an example of a school um, within Kibera. Um, you can see the corrugated metal sides to the school, and these benches would probably be shared by about five or six students. And work in these shanty towns is normal, normally in the informal sector. This means the government isn't aware of it, people aren't paying tax, and they're just doing any, any sort of jobs that they can find to um, survive. However, in some areas, the shanty towns are improving. Um, this is another photo showing Daravi in Mumbai. And in this circumstance, the government has provided electricity um, to help the people.